Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries from one of the less known satellite galaxies of the Milky Way, the galaxy known as Leo 1. And very recently the scientists have identified something extremely unusual that nobody really expected. Something that suggests that this particular dwarf galaxy seems to have a tremendously enormous black hole on the inside. Something that's a little bit more difficult to explain right now. But there are quite a lot of details here to sort of dissect and to explain, so let's start with, well, what exactly is Leo and where is it located? And that by itself is a pretty difficult question, mostly because there are several different galaxies named Leo and a lot of them are very close to the Milky Way. And when I say close to the Milky Way, I mean it's in the so-called local group. There are roughly around 60 different dwarf galaxies very close to the Milky Way and many of them seem to be gravitationally attached to it. Although in one of the previous videos we also discussed some of the unusual discoveries about all of these galaxies together. But that's something you can explore in one of the previous videos that's going to be popping up somewhere right there near the end of this video. Anyway, so right here we have roughly around 60 galaxies with quite a few of them named Leo. There is Leo 1, Leo 2, Leo 3, Leo 4. There's also Leo A, and because of this it took me quite a while to specifically identify which galaxy they were talking about. And that's because many of these galaxies are located in the constellation of Leo. Now this is sort of connected to that mystery I explored in that previous video, the mystery of many of these galaxies sort of being chunked in the same region of the night skies. But that's one of the reasons why so many dwarf galaxies discovered in the vicinity of the Milky Way do have the name Leo followed by either a number or a letter. But the one we're talking about today is known as Leo 1. The galaxy that you can sort of see in this map right here located roughly around 800,000 light years away from planet Earth. The galaxy that you can also see in this picture. But it's not this. This is the star known as Regulus, one of the brightest stars in the night skies. Leo 1 is this tiny dot in the bottom right. Which is also one of the reasons why this galaxy is somewhat difficult to study. Not only is it relatively dim, it's kind of difficult to see it, it's also right next to an extremely bright star. I think this is actually best visualized by using Space Engine here. And so here, if I were to zoom into the location of this galaxy, it would sort of start looking like this. So the star Regulus is extremely bright and it's right right next to it. And so in order to study this galaxy, you'd have to use some sort of filter to try to block Regulus. But if we were to jump into this galaxy, it would look something like this. This is what's usually referred to as the Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy. And from what the scientists know about this galaxy, is that it already had quite a lot of secrets since its original discovery back in the 90s. First of all, it seems to have a mass of about 20 million masses of the Sun, but for some unknown reason, it doesn't seem to possess a lot of dark matter, and because of its very low content of dark matter compared to a lot of other galaxies, Leo 1 has always been the source of investigations for the scientists trying to understand exactly what dark matter is. But there are quite a lot of other unusual features about this galaxy. For example, it doesn't rotate, unlike the Milky Way galaxy. It also doesn't produce any more stars. Now this has been previously explained through the concept known as REM pressure, where essentially the larger, more massive galaxy can strip a lot of the gas from the smaller dwarf galaxy. So the scientists believe that this is exactly what the Milky Way did to the Leo 1 galaxy in order to prevent star formation. And so roughly around 1 billion years ago, suddenly all of the stars stopped being produced. But at the same time, this is one of the youngest galaxies in the vicinity, so none of the stars here are more than 10 billion years old. And they also are relatively low in metallicity, suggesting that this is just a somewhat underdeveloped galaxy compared to a lot of other ones. And surprisingly, around this galaxy, there is a tremendous amount of ionized gas. It's believed that there is actually just as much gas as the total mass of the galaxy itself. This is right now not really well understood. Although it could definitely be that gas stripped by the Milky Way, which would have sort of produced stars eventually. And because of these unusual features, some of the scientists have even suggested that maybe Leo 1 is just basically a leftover galaxy. It's a tidal stream. It's essentially a stretched spaghetti from the interaction with the Milky Way galaxy. And we're basically just looking at it from a slightly different perspective. But this hasn't really been confirmed yet, and it's still very difficult to confirm this simply because it's still very dim and it's somewhat difficult to see. 
Nevertheless, because of its low dark matter content, a lot of scientists have been trying to investigate this and trying to discover what's happening here, which is exactly what the scientists in this recent paper did as well. The paper that, as always, you can find in the description below. And specifically what the scientists wanted to do is study the dark matter profile of this galaxy by studying the motions of the stars and then comparing them to various models from various supercomputer simulations in order to establish which of these models would most likely represent the actual content in the galaxy itself. And they did this by looking at some of the individual stars in the galaxy and by studying their velocity dispersion away from the center itself. And so, the faster the stars will be moving here, the more matter is most likely enclosed inside the orbits. But the main purpose of the study was to see if there was more dark matter in the center of the galaxy compared to the outskirts. And all of this was done by measuring each of these individual stars you see in the picture, or specifically their velocity around the galaxy. And while well, to their surprise they discovered that the model that fit the best, specifically with the 95% fit, was the one suggesting that there is a really massive black hole right at the center, and practically no dark matter whatsoever. A black hole with a mass of about 3.3 million masses of the Sun, which is just a little bit smaller than the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, and that's what makes this somewhat unusual. In the Milky Way galaxy, the black hole itself is just a tiny tiny fraction of the total mass of the entire galaxy, in Leo 1, the black hole seems to be a huge proportion of the mass. And moreover, its origins are currently almost impossible to explain. And the total mass of this black hole would be roughly around 15% of the total mass of Leo 1. And so this potential discovery of a supermassive black hole in a very very small galaxy in comparison really sort of makes no sense right now. You have this really small galaxy falling into the Milky Way, but it seems to be bringing a supermassive black hole with it. Although in this particular case the scientists admit that the results are somewhat different from some of the previous studies, but they also explain that their particular simulation specifically focused on the center of this galaxy, a lot of other studies did not really consider this. Or in other words, unlike other studies, here they focused on very specific regions in the galaxy, identifying the center as the most massive part of everything here. And although in the past a lot of these dwarf spheroidal galaxies were mostly used to try to understand the existence of dark matter and how it's basically distributed across the universe, the results from the study also suggest that these particular galaxies might be exceptionally useful to try to understand how massive black holes form as well. And if the existence of this black hole is confirmed in further studies, this can also maybe help us explain the mystery of the formation of these giants. At the moment there is really no clear picture how such massive black holes can form across the universe. For example, even today it's not really well understood how the massive black hole inside the Milky Way formed. And so if all of this forms as the smaller galaxies collide and create larger black holes, this would maybe resolve a lot of the problems. With the new mystery of course being, how exactly did such a massive black hole form in such a small galaxy? Although I guess maybe one of the potential explanations to the existence of the Leo 1 right here and the supermassive black hole inside of it is that, like I mentioned before, is just a stripped galaxy that used to be much much larger and because of the interaction with the Milky Way it lost a lot of its stars and a lot of its mass. So maybe it is a more massive and larger spaghettified galaxy after all. But at the moment none of this is currently known more confirmations are needed, and a lot more studies to try to explore what's happening at the center of Leo 1. So for now that's kind of it. It's a really exciting discovery, a very unusual discovery, and a new mystery to sort of try to solve in some of the future studies. Until the scientists figure this out, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.